Hey guys, it's Alex Pierce, and today we're going to be talking about a new feature in AP Game Tools. So once you've installed the new version of AP Game Tools, if you go to the Shader Editor, on the side, on the End menu, you'll get an AP Game Tools tab, and then if you open this, you'll have two different things here. You've got a Object Texture Resize tool and World Texture Resize tools. So we'll first talk about objects. So what the Object Resize Tools does is the selected node, this is very important, has to be the selected node, it will resize the image or convert it to JPEG and then save it in the location as your as your blend file. So first of all, you definitely have to have already saved it. You have to have saved somewhere or else it won't work. Um, <clears throat> so this first example, I'm actually going to show you the convert to JPEG uh, tool because it's, it's easy to understand. It just takes whatever this material is or whatever this texture is, converts it to JPEG, and I'll, it's mostly, if you do over, hover over the uh, tooltips, it'll tell you. This is basically advised only for web. Um, if you don't, if you're not sure, just keep it PNG and don't worry about it. Uh, and you can do some reading on your own time if you, if you want to, to figure out when to do JPEG, when to do PNG. Basically, if you're going to Unity or Unreal, a lot of these programs actually do their own compression. <clears throat> so you want to stay with PNG. If you're going to 3JS or you're going to um, Verge, if you're doing anything on the web, basically you want to do it in JPEG. It makes this, the file sizes smaller, so it loads faster, and it also um, it's also easier for the devices to load. So if we go ahead and push convert to JPEG, um, let's push that. It doesn't look like anything changed because it's, uh, oh, well, maybe that's why. Let me try again. So the, this is the PNG. Convert to JPEG. It converted it, and we couldn't tell any difference in the visual quality. I mean, this is probably not the best example, but I've done this with uh, some some projects, and um, just take my word for it. You usually don't to see any difference at all. And if you see, you can see the size here. The PNG is uh, three megabytes, and the the JPEG is 0.4 megabytes, basically. So a significant size difference, um, and this will will help your web application load a lot faster. You know, I, I looked at a, there's one of my projects recently where just converting the JPEGs would save about 50 megabytes. Um, <clears throat> and then that was just on one model. And then uh, overall, it was going to be hundreds of megabytes we, were, we would save by converting all the images to uh, JPEG or most of them. And I'll also mention here too, everyone will tell you, and if you look online, everyone's going to say, never, ever, ever do a normal map. Uh, never convert that to a JPEG. And there's good reason why they say that. But... What I would say is test it. I mean, it's it's so easy to tell. I, I wish I had a good example up already, but it's so easy to tell. You just click on the, the normal map, press convert to JPEG. If you see any difference at all, then just stay with the PNG. And if you don't see any difference, then you're gonna save yourself a lot of space because normal maps, uh, normal maps are, are, are definitely, um, yeah, you, you can save a lot of space there. So let's just move on to the next part. It's a photo scan of a, a helicopter crash site, I think. Um, and we're just going to look at, let's see, let's just find a part, maybe this part. What is this? So yeah, we'll, we'll look at this. So the things that are photo scanned, um, they're, they're a great use case and a great uh, example to use because JPEG, and this is what the material looks like. Um, it's pretty interesting. And uh, if we do image, Resize, we can see what size it is. So this is an 8K image, 8192 by 8192. <clears throat> so this is already JPEG, so we're not gonna do uh, convert to JPEG, but you would do this last. If you were gonna use convert to JPEG, you would uh, resize it first, get it down to whatever size you wanted, and then you would convert it to JPEG. So what we're gonna do is, if we get really close to this model, we, we, we should be able to see a difference here. So I'm gonna get real close. And I'm gonna do, there's a few different ways you could uh, you could use this tool. But for now, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm just gonna duplicate the original image. It backs up your image, so you don't, it's not gonna ever overwrite your image. But I'm gonna make a few versions here for us to, uh, to, to, to look at. So, <clears throat> um, let's see, so first, so we can do this. What, again, it doesn't have to be the one that's attached. You can, anyone that's selected, that's the one that's gonna convert. So I'm actually going to convert them over here. So we'll do 4K, and then it should uh, when it when it resizes it, it renames it to 4, 4096 at the end, and then we can do 2K. I know 
because I've looked at this, I know that 2K and 1K are basically not going to work, but I'll just do it anyway because this is a good example of uh, of how how a normal workflow for me uh, would be. Would just see like, okay, can I take this 8K image? Can I take it down to to let me see how far I can take it? So again, we're zoomed in real close here, so we should see the difference. But let's go ahead and do color. Oops, color to base color. Oh yeah, that's a huge difference. Okay, if we go here to here, big difference. So this texture we may not even be able to resize. If you're if you're looking from back here, it's less noticeable, but even still because of that pattern, you're probably gonna wanna just stay with the, the original 8K for this particular one. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of this version and let's go check out another object. So this one doesn't have those that crazy pattern. Let's look at this area right here. And we'll do the same thing. We're gonna duplicate, duplicate, and I think that's good for now. Let's go to, in fact, let's go ahead and switch this to here. So we'll see the, the update is immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and push, select this one and then go 4096. And we will see a difference going from 8K to 4K is a huge difference. Uh, and th with this particular, you can see how, how tightly packed this, uh, uh, the UV map is here. So there will be a difference, like if I, especially if I zoom in here. If we go here to here, well, there's really not that much of a difference, to be honest, in this section. You can definitely see it, but, you know, if the user is going to be here, you can't tell at all. If the user is going to be here, let's see, let me find this, maybe this wall. If the user is going to be here, that's the closest they're ever going to get to it. They definitely don't see a difference. Let's just go ahead, yeah, let's, let's try uh, 1024. Let's just, or excuse me, let's try 2K. Yeah, so if, if the user is not going to get very close to this model, you can get away with 2K. Let's see. Come in here. Yeah, even this doesn't look too bad. This pattern does a little bit. So again, if that pattern's a big deal, you know, that then, you know, it kind of it's kind of up to you like you have to be the the one to decide. But I'll just show you real quick. So, you can see again, this is uh, going from 8K So that's 8K and this is 2K and there's very little difference. And, but the size difference is huge. So let's just find that one was material one. Uh, so this is the original. If I just open this up, you can see. So this was 12 megabytes um, and the, so the material one 2K version is one megabyte basically, uh, one, 1. 1.7 megabytes. So again, you know, less than 10 times the size and on many devices, like an iPhone 6, this would an 8K texture would never load. So if you're going, if you're going again, if you're going to web, there's just no way that this would ever load. You can look better in here, but it's never going to load on an iPhone, so forget it. Um, so you can see how this can be a very, very useful tool. Okay, so let's talk about the world texture resize tools. So go to your shader editor, go to your world setting, and again, make sure that you're not in the object texture size because this will still resize whatever texture you have selected. So make sure you're in the world texture resize tools. And we'll talk first about convert world to JPEG. So this you should, if you're using the HDR to light your scene, like we are right now, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this point light off. If you are using this HDR to light your scene, okay, don't, convert world to JPEG because it's going to be terrible. Uh, right now this is being lit completely by the HDR. If you convert it to JPEG, which I've already done, you lose basically all the information of the HDR. So why do you have this convert world to JPEG? Well, sometimes uh, you want to have the HDR just in the background. Uh, so for instance, over in the world settings, world tab over here, if you turn off all of these, then you are just using the HDR to as a background, as a backdrop. You're not using it to light. Then you're using, you know, the point lights or a sun or whatever you're whatever you're doing to light your scene. In this case, it makes a ton of sense to convert it to a JPEG because the size difference is just crazy. So the original was 25 megabytes. The JPEG is not even one, it's half a megabyte. So you can see this is a huge difference. Again, if you're going to web, that's a huge difference, huge difference. 
so definitely make sure to use JPEG if you're only using it as a background. Any other reason, don't use JPEG. Okay, now the other tools behave just like the object texture resize tools. So make sure this is selected, make sure you're in world. And then this is a 4K image. We're going to resize it to 2K. And let's see what the difference is here in the background. If we look here at the windows, we'll see a difference. Okay, so uh, let's just switch back and forth. Let's see, so 4K. Yeah, so the, the background you can tell is a little sharper. It's definitely a little sharper. So if the background is important, in this particular example, 2K might not be not might not be good enough. The lighting, if we just look at the lighting here, let's see if the, the lighting is different. No, there's not really much difference in the in the lighting, which is important. You definitely want to check the 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 lighting. So if we look at 1K, if we resize it to 1K, the overall lighting quality is okay, but if you look here, you see how we're getting all these these specs? Let's go back to the 4K. And now see how those specs are gone. Um, so the, 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 you definitely have to look not just at the background, but the lighting quality to, to determine what size your HDR should be. In some cases, 2K is, is fine. Um, in, this, in this instance, 2K is probably pushing it. Um, there's definitely some, some the, the quality is not quite as good. The background is definitely a little bit blurry. Um, but if I were going to web, the difference in size is probably worth the the visual quality lo loss that I get. Because if you look here, the original is 25 megabytes. The 2K is just 6.5 megabytes. So again, this is a big, big difference and will load so much easier on a mobile phone. So the, the, the yeah, the, the, it's sort of up to you. It's, it's up to the use case. If you're going to use this for a high-end project that's not going to be on web, then just keep it 4K. If there's no issues, just keep it as high as quality as you can. If you're going to web, then it's it's always a compromise between size, loading speed, um, and quality. And, and there's definitely some compromises you'll have to make. And I think in this particular example, maybe not the most the best example, but in this particular example, I think 2K is a huge improvement uh, in, in load times and, and, and in, in size. So anyway, I hope you guys like this, this new feature. Let me know if you have any, any questions or any other feature ideas. I am debating on making a, um, a resize all textures button or a selected, maybe I could, I could, I could, uh, script a way that you could select multiple images. So if you had, you know, for instance, uh, a lot of the, the real examples I'm, I have, there's, they're a lot more complicated. There, you know, there's, there's a, a, a base color, a metalness, uh, a roughness, and a normal a lot of times. And so one thing I've been thinking about, I like having doing it one at a time because I want to make sure what I'm doing is not changing the quality. But there's still, especially when you have a lot of objects you're going to be doing this to, I'm thinking about making a selected images, and then you could do it for the for, for the selected nodes, but. I don't know. I'm still sort of debating on that one. If that's a feature that you would like, definitely let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.